Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai, new thinking, new possibilities. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. Coming up, we'll take a look at how technology from Volkswagen's XL1 has started to trickle down into other models. We have an update to the airbag recall, and later in the show, I'll take you back inside the AutoLine garage. But first, let's get to the news. Earlier this month, we reported that the Eaton Corporation could have to pay supplier company Meritor a staggering $2 billion for violating antitrust laws. But now Bloomberg reports that Eaton avoided that by agreeing to pay Meritor $500 million before heading to trial. Meritor had sued Eaton over restrictive contracts and unfair rebates for the marketing of truck transmissions, which resulted in Eaton gaining 90% of the market. Well, you can't have a healthy auto industry when the European market is flat on its back. But maybe that's starting to turn around. May was the ninth consecutive month that sales were up in Europe and up a decent 4.3% at that. And while Germany and the UK have been leading the increase, it looks like sales are up across the EU market. In fact, Italy was the only of Europe's five major markets to see sales go down. Last year, Volkswagen introduced a sleek, futuristic-looking plug-in diesel hybrid in the European market called the XL1. Oliver Schmidt, the head of powertrains at Volkswagen of America, says the company refers to it as its Formula One car, because it was originally designed to travel 100 kilometers on one liter of fuel. Oliver tells Autoline, and I quote, the XL1 was to showcase what's possible with fuel economy, but now the step is to bring this technology to other vehicles. And it's already starting to happen. The hybrid module in the XL1 is the same exact one that's in the Jetta Hybrid. Plus, the company is looking at using the XL1's camera technology that replaces rearview mirrors. This helps improve the car's aerodynamic, which helps fuel economy. The system has been approved in Europe, but Oliver says VW needs to discuss it with NHTSA about implementing the cameras. Well, we have an update to yesterday's story about the recalled Takata airbags. More automakers have joined the list with affected models. BMW is recalling some 3 Series models from 01 to 06, Chrysler is calling back some 2006 Chargers, and Ford will recall some Mustangs, Rangers, and GTs. Most of these effective vehicles were sold in high humidity areas because NHTSA found that moisture played a role in the problem. Click the headline in the transcripts to get all of the details. Not many people enjoy the car buying experience so it's not too surprising that a new study from TrueCar showed there's a gap in trust between the consumer and dealer. But the report also found that car buyers would be willing to pay more for cars if they felt there was more transparency in the process. Most people believe that dealers earn 20% profits on average from a sale, but that number is actually less than 4%. TrueCar's survey found that most consumers believe a fair amount would be up to 12%. And you can be sure we'll hear more about this survey on Thursday night because our guest on this week's AutoLine After Hours is the president of TrueCar, John Kraftcheck. You know, we've had some really good interviews with John in the past, and I'm sure this one will be no different. So make sure you tune in this Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time for some of the best insider discussion in the industry. And coming up next, why a U.S. regulation holding back some new lighting technology might not be such a bad thing. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. The world of automotive technology is a rapidly changing industry. One such area is lighting. However, a few luxury automakers have run into roadblocks trying to introduce their new, improved systems into the American market. But I say, Maybe that's not such a bad thing, because sometimes customers are the ones left footing a hefty repair bill just so automakers can say they have the latest, greatest technology in their vehicles. 
Auto Line Garage is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. LED headlamps definitely illuminate better than halogen ones, but as I pointed out before, they can be much more expensive to replace because you can't replace just one LED. Even still, more and more automakers are adopting LEDs because they can be packaged in smaller spaces and are more efficient. Now we're seeing luxury automakers like Audi and Mercedes coming out with their new and improved LED headlamps. So they must illuminate better, be packaged smaller, and more efficient than ever before, right? Well, I recently got to take a look at a dissected version of Audi's Matrix LED headlamp, and I'm not so sure. Just take a look at what it takes to make these things work. First off, everything that lights up is an LED, which all require their own heat sink to cool them down. There are 18 LEDs that comprise the turn signal alone. That normally might not be too bad, but the turn signals light up sequentially, so each one requires its own heat sink. Not too packaging friendly. Then there's the fan and vents that blow on the LEDs to keep them cool and reduce condensation inside the assembly. Oh yeah, the fan is mounted inside the housing, and if it goes bad, the LEDs will overheat and no longer work. A few of the Matrix headlamp safety features are there's no switch needed for high and low beams. High beams are always on because the lights will adjust themselves. They help illuminate around corners and will also shut off banks of LEDs as not to blind oncoming traffic. While that's all pretty neat, it also translates into spaghetti-like mess of wires and a small computer required to control those features. Put it all together and the assembly is no smaller or lighter than your average halogen headlamp assembly. And I'm willing to bet, with all that's required to control the thing, that it's no more efficient as well. Oh, and then there's the price. Are you ready for this one? A little over $3,200, which is about 2,350 euros. And that's not including the labor to replace it. So are these newfangled LED headlamps really that much better than the ones that are currently out there? And the cost. It makes the price of current LED headlamps not look so bad. This may be one time that US regulations holding back technology is not such a bad thing. And one piece of trickle down technology I hope not to see anytime soon. But that's a wrap for this AutoLine Garage. Hey, and look at the time. It's the end of AutoLine Daily as well. Have a good day, and we hope to see you back here again tomorrow.